The 2012 F1 season needs no introduction as one of the greatest seasons in F1 history. There are going to be a few people saying 2021 was better, but I want you to give a good look at them and give them a slap into their senses. 2021 does not come close to 2012 at all. There were six world champions in one grid. Well, seven if you include Nico Rosberg, but he hasn't won a championship at this point yet. It was the introduction of the Circuit of the Americas. Say what you will about America and F1, but this track is honestly one of the greatest tracks F1 has ever introduced. Seven different race winners in the first seven races. I don't think that will ever be repeated. Well, wait, how many winners do we have this season? Oh wait, we have seven race winners this season as well. Um, if Perez wins a race, it'll become eight. Well, there was also eight in 2012, right? Raikkonen? Yeah. You know what, whatever. And most importantly, Mark Webber's last ever win in F1. <laughs> and also, what came of this season was the F1 2012 game. And in my opinion, the second best game of the PS3, Xbox 360 era, and a top 5 F1 game in history. Go watch my tier list video. So in today, we're going to be revisiting F1 2012 to see if it has passed the test of time. So here we go. Alright, that's all the intro you're getting. I don't want to get copyrighted. Yeah, just, just peek. And when I press the start button... Yeah. Woohoohoo! Okay, buddy. Alright, we're gonna start a new game. My first name, um... Kevin Durant. I am from America. There you go. Okay, oh, we're doing the young driver's test. Um, which was the most beautiful out of these? The McLaren. Three, two, one. Hey, good to see you. Oh my day. Yeah, okay. You know what? For 2012, the face scan doesn't look that bad. You know what? I can't even count the amount of times Arava has gone through the young driver's test, so I, I won't even bother. You you know what happens already. Here we are in the F1 game menu. They went for a completely different direction after F1 2011. F1 2010 and 11 pretty much had the same style of menu. This is a different one, and I think it looks magnificent. Look at this beautiful showroom, mate. Uh, 2013 looked good too, but th this is different. This is different. All right, quick race. We're not going to go in the quick race just yet. We're going to look at the lineups and the drivers. Sebastian Vettel and Mark Webber. They weren't really that promising to start the season off. Really, they mostly made up their points in the second half of the season. Or Sebastian Vettel won his third championship in a row in a very chaotic race. But, you know, Red Bull had the second best car this season. I think McLaren were on top of them most of the time. You know, inter-team stuff. So yeah, Sebastian Vettel. And Mark Webber won his last ever race, the British Grand Prix, with a titanic battle with Fernando Alonso. And the Wings Life livery looked amazing. Bring those back, Red Bull. Next, McLaren, Jensen Button, and Lewis Hamilton. The last season in McLaren where they had a full British lineup. I think this was the first sign that, yeah, Jensen Button was starting to sort of fall off a bit. He had three race wins, only one less than Hamilton. But Hamilton should have like seven race wins. We haven't got to Hamilton yet though. And his last win came in the most dramatic race of the season. So yeah, Jensen Button. And probably the unluckiest season of his career. Lewis Hamilton. It's either this or 2010. Uh, Hamilton had four wins. It should be six. It could probably be seven as well. Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure he was also tweeting like Kevin Durant in 2012. And he also posted his team's telemetry on Twitter. Oh well! Next is Ferrari. What on earth is up with Alonso's chin? I'm not gonna bother with Ferrari too much. Go watch the Aldas video. Next, Mercedes. Obviously, Michael Schumacher with that legendary pole lap at Monaco, which he didn't actually end up starting on pole because he had a grid penalty. And also, Nico Rosberg won his first ever F1 race. And Martin Brundle also dropped this line the very same weekend Rosberg won his first race. He's parked up in Shanghai, Michael Schumacher. And that's his race over. He's getting out. No, I haven't been this disappointed as in Shrek 2. Next, Kimi Raikkonen's return to the sport after his two-year hiatus of crashing rally cars. 
He actually was able to get a few podiums here and there. Remember the legendary one at uh, Valencia. And obviously his infamous, leave me alone, I know what I'm doing. Okay, Kimi, next guy behind you is Alonso. Alonso, five seconds behind you. And then going the wrong way in Brazil, which which shows that he does not in fact know what he is doing. And then there's Roman Grosjean. You know what, the Into the Barrier video just perfectly describes his season, so I'll just play a clip from it. It's China now, and Grosjean will be really looking to actually make it through the foot. No, no, he smashed, he smashed off Alonso already. Next, Force India with the Grand Prix killer, Nico Hulkenberg. It was an alright season from them, I guess, but fun fact, both of these guys actually affected the season finale in Brazil. Next was Sauber. This was probably Sergio Perez's best season. Well, okay, 2016 Perez, but... And Kobayashi got a podium in his home race. And this is also the season where Sauber got their last podium. And ever since, they haven't been anywhere close. Actually, no, Hulkenberg qualified third in Monza. And judging on this year's performances, they probably won't go anywhere close to that. So yeah, Sauber. Next, Tor Rosso. Oh my gosh. What? Oh, this was such terrible timing. Oh no. But hey, at least I witnessed his last race live. Uh, go watch the Singapore Grand Prix vlog, please, I beg you. Ricardo's second season, because he did drive for HRT. And Jean-Eric Verne, who, believe it or not, this was only his rookie season. I, I don't know why they chose Kvyat over Verne, uh, but whatever. <laughs> Another different winner! A new winner in Formula 1! It's Pastor Maldonado ahead of Fernando Alonso! Kimi Raikkonen's challenge! He came close, but not close enough! And Dana Williams with their first pre-victory since Juan Pablo Montoya in 2004. I don't even want to talk about Bruno Senna. Cater him. I just remember Kovalainen with the Angry Birds helmet. And Vitaly Petrov. Well, okay, there's really nothing much to talk about about these guys. HRT, Pedro De La Rosa's last ever season in F1. I saw you two weeks ago. And Narain Karthikeyan. Oh my gosh. If I speak, I am in, in big trouble. Cucumber, yes, I will say that. Cucumber, Sebastian Vettel. And Marusha, Timo Glock. Um, this was his last season, right? Did he drive in 2013? Or was 2013 Max Chilton and, uh... No, 2013 was Charles Pick and, uh, Bianchi, right? Max Chilton wasn't there yet. Oh wait, no, it was Max Chilton already in 2013, because Pick was Pick is here. Well, considering this was the last season of HRT, we'll use HRT. And the track we shall use... This is the last season with Valencia, but I already used Valencia enough on 2010. So I guess we'll do Abu Dhabi. Alright, so here we are in Abu Dhabi in the HRT. Oh my days, we're going slower than the ghost car. That's how bad this car is. I mean, every car handles the same in F1 2012 or any of the F1 games before F1 2015 for that matter, but but this feels like I'm driving in slow motion. Okay, but at least it's not like 2015 manner levels of bad because the 2015 manner went slower than the GP2 lap time in Malaysia. But the 2013 GP2 lap time, I'm not sure about the 2015 GP2 or if there was even GP2 in Malaysia in 2015. But yeah, it just feels like I'm driving in slow motion. At least make it the hardest thing to drive. The handling, I think this was probably the best handling we got from F1 2010 to F1 2014. It feels like how you'd expect the cars to feel like and I think just had the right amount of grip. Compared to like F1 2013, people say that's the best as I did some track limits people say f1 2013 had the best handling but i disagree with that because it had just way too much grip as i cut the track again i leave the track again i mean f1 2013 just had way too much grip like you can do an entire wet race in f1 2013 with traction control off and never make a correction once that's how grippy f1 2013 was but like once you used up your tires it feels like you're driving on ice you go faster now but that barely changes anything Okay, we spin. You know what? I'm not even gonna bother driving this car anymore. Let's just let's just finally go on track for a race. All right. So the winner of the 2012 American Grand Prix was Lewis Hamilton, and I actually think that was one of the best races of 2012. No one really talks about it. Go watch it for yourself. All right. Looking at the grid, Vettel's on pole. Alonso is third. Grosjean fourth. Oh no. Maldonado behind. Okay. Remember the story of this race? Felipe Massa took a grid penalty to promote Alonso's position. All right. I'm not gonna talk over this. I'm just gonna let you enjoy this.
we have Grosjean up next. Okay. All right, I'm gonna quit. The difficulty is too easy. All right, the greatest difference now we're P5 and oh Schumacher second. Okay. Anyways, here we go. All right, better start than last time. But I'm not gonna attack the inside. Okay, we lose two positions. Rosberg also loses two positions. We lose, yeah, all right. Lose too much at the start. All right, you need to lock in, man. Okay, Jensen made. All right, fairly easy move. Can we get Rosberg too? There you go. All right, I made it professional, which is like the second hardest. The hardest is legendary, but I don't want to take any risks. As Schumacher gets overtaken by Alonso, as we have a world champions battle happening right now, the top five, actually the top six in this race currently, are all world champions. If Button is seventh, which I don't think he is, you can see the yellow marker there for your teammate. So, the top six is champions, not the top seven. I also just realized that all the world champions apart from uh, Michael Schumacher won a race in 2012. Alright, Andy Knight, oh what a move mate, a bit of contact but it's whatever. I think I kind of screwed over Reich in his race and looking up ahead I think Alonso is actually going to win this one. Yay, thank you for bringing Vettel closer to us. Alright, I have to uh, reduce my fuel, I'm already, I'm in optimal fuel right now, not plus one. What's our lap time looking like? I think we definitely went much quicker. There you go, fastest lap of the race. The force feedback on these old F1 games, like not just F1 2012, on F1 2013 as well, it was just like way too strong. Zalonso still in P1. Okay, Vettel. Oh, Vettel made a mistake. Oh, outside of Shumi now. I think I, oh, I think I killed him. Not really kill, you know what I mean. I kind of ruined his race, but it's whatever. It's fine. All right, we're going on the final lap now. Maybe they should bring back limited flashbacks so that idiots like me can learn how to drive. Oh, this is so good. Alright, prime opportunity to make a move. Alhamdulillah, brother. Yes! Okay. And we have DRS too. Oh my gosh, I love you. Oh, uh, one more lap. We're probably going to win, but it's fine. You know what? Let me throw everything at him. I think it's actually possible that we win this. Oh, never mind. Shouldn't have made that mistake there, but it's whatever. Well, P2 is still not bad after being like P8 for a bit. And uh, a questionable and a questionable move on Michael Schumacher. Anyways, it's going to be P2, a podium place, and Alonso wins. If only that happened in real life, right? As we set on the fastest lap again, 42.7. Okay. As I'm uh, looking down here, Kimi Raikkonen, P6. Where did Schumacher finish? Okay, P8. My bad, cuh. Man, this was a vibe. They should bring this back. Please. Oh, no. Did he just clip the... Po okay. And that music in the background, too. The background music feels like a Marvel movie for some reason. Well, now that we're done with the quick race, we should definitely check out Champions Mode. Alright, so Kimi is up ahead in P7, so we have to get him. Alright. Yeah, Kimi's not even in my map. Okay, he's right there, which is way too far. How on earth am I gonna get him? I don't know. Stop blocking me, Nico. Alright, beautifully set up move around the outside. Doesn't work. Ah, oh, screw your defense, mate. There you go. Alright, so all the three cars ahead of me are bunched up right now. This is either going to be a pain or really useful. Alright, let's try to get DRS in the Camel Straight. Okay, we definitely will get DRS in the Camel Straight. And there's a Duresta. Oh, okay. For oh, okay, two free positions. Thank you, Duresta, for battling with Rosberg. Rosberg, don't 
do anything on the inside. All right, we're going to get the rest of now. Right, and then it's way too far up ahead. Where on earth is he? This is like the original breaking point, but I kind of like this more than breaking point. All right, Felipe. Why was he hanging in the inside line even though I wasn't anywhere close to him? That's super strange. Who won now? No good. Ran wide. Lost grip. This is so bad. All right, we went a tenth quicker. We're definitely going to overtake Massa here. Just flying by. Okay. And next, Kimi Raikkonen. Can we get him on time? Looks like he's in some lap traffic. That is very useful for me. Oh, for crying out loud. You know what? I don't want this video to be three years long. We're just going to end it here. So, let's get into the conclusion of the video. Now, before we start the conclusion, big thanks to the guy who let me Steam share this. I will put his channel in the description below. So that will do it for today's video. Do I still think F1 2012 is the best F1 game of its generation? Yes, I do. I mean, I'll get more in-depth into it if we play F1 2013. But I don't have F1 2013. That's the issue. I'm going to have to find a way around it. I still do think there's uh, quite a bit of replay value with this game. Like, let's say you want to experience how the old F1 games were, then sure. I think graphically, I actually think it still looks pretty up to date. And oh yeah, if you didn't know it, I actually used to do an F1 2012 series on my channel. Way back in like 2020. When I first learned how to edit video, I was like, what, 13? But if you want to watch them, they're all gone now, so don't even think about it. But honestly, I see this game more as like a sit-down, relax game, more than something you take it seriously with a wheel. Like, I'm actually much quicker on a controller than a wheel on F1 2012 or all of the um, old F1 games for that matter. And once this video goes live, I will be putting a poll on uh, my YouTube community tab to see which F1 game you want me to revisit next. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.